What's up, peers, and welcome to the World Crypto Network, here with the next reading of the Bitcoin Optech Group newsletter. Thank you very much to all the principals and associates of this awesome open source group. Today, newsletter number 34, on February 19th, 2019. This week's newsletter summarizes a discussion about output tagging with BIP 118 Ccash no input unsafe. It announces mergers that will make it possible to pair Bitcoin Core's built-in wallet in watch-only mode with a hardware wallet and it describes the completion of the feature freeze for the next Bitcoin Core release. Also summarized are numerous code and documentation changes in popular Bitcoin infrastructure projects. Action items, none this week. All you have to do is hodl Bitcoin. News. Discussing about tagging outputs to enable restricted features on spending. The BIP118 Sikash no input unsafe, no input proposal, allows the person generating a signature that authorizes the spend of one UTXO to optionally allow that signature to be reused or replayed for spending another UTXO sent to the same public key. This enabled some new features when used with protocols such as payment channels that all contain the same public key. Uh, for example, see the proposed L2 layer for the Lightning Network. But it also makes possible replay attacks that can result in loss of money when you reusing this address. For example, Alice uses a coin she previously received uh, to one of her addresses and signs a spend to Bob using Sikash no input unsafe. Later, someone else pays money to that same address of Alice's intending to send her uh, some more money. Bob, or anyone else for that matter, can now uh, send that output to Bob by revealing or by replaying Alice's earlier signature. One, of the, uh, one way to help avoid such accidents is simply to append the unsafe to the name of the feature, encour encouraging developers to learn about the protocol nuances before they implement it in their tools. However, uh, some developers have been looking for additional ways to preventing these problems. In December, Jonas Lau proposed only allowing no input to be used in the output being spent uh, that had been uh, specially tagged as its creation to allow the use of no input. This would only allow the feature to be used when both the spender and the receiver agree, uh, as is in the case with payment channels anyhow, and preventing any miscommunications or misunderstandings from ending in loss of funds. Renewed discussion last week and this week saw analysis of the impact this would have on proposed layer 2 protocols such as L2 and channel factories. Although tagging increases complexity, the general opinion seems that, this does, that it does not fundamentally increase the cost or reduce the effectiveness of the described proposals, although it could make them a bit less private. Bitcoin Core Preliminary Hardware Wallet Support After months of incremental improvements, this week saw the merge of the final set of pull requests needed for Bitcoin Core's master development branch to support receiving and sending transactions in conjunction with the hardware wallet via the hardware wallet integration tool. Uh, this HWI is part of the Bitcoin Core project, but it is not yet distributed with the Bitcoin Core software, and it's currently only accessible from the command line. It, is, it provides a solid foundation upon which to build tools that can make it easy to use an external key store with Bitcoin's core native wallet and fully verification node. Note that also this is already possible to connect a hardware wallet to an Electrum wallet connected to your own node using Electrum personal server. Organizations using advanced security techniques such as hardware secure modules, cold wallets and multisig may want to investigate the design of HWI and how it integrates with Bitcoin Core 
using outputs, output script descriptors and BIP174 partially signed Bitcoin transactions. These new next generation encodings of keys uh, and transaction data and metadata, uh, along with other advances such as the Miniscript policy language, will make it easier than ever to build and operate secure Bitcoin storage solutions that interact with a full node for verification. Bitcoin Core Freeze Week. As scheduled, the project has stopped accepting features for the upcoming release of major version 0.18. As often happens, this was preceded by a week or so of active last-minute reviewing and merging of new features, which is reflected in the long list of changes to this week's notable code changes section below. The next two weeks will focus on developers' testing and bug fixing, uh, following, followed by the issue of the release candidates for user testing. The release candidate cycle for a major release usually uh, lasts two to four weeks before the final release. So in two weeks, we're going to have the next version. <laughs> Related, the project prefers to merge major new features earlier in the new development cycle uh, so that they get as much additional developer testing as possible. After 0.18 branches created, around March 1st, Anyone who wants to set, see a feature in version 0.19, estimate release in October 2019, it would be advised to either try to open a pull request for it within the next two months or to assist in reviewing an existing pull request for that feature. Some notable existing pull requests that need more reviews or development include support for BIP 156 Dandelion Privacy Enhancing Transaction Relay, BIP-151 encrypted peer-to-peer -peer connections, BIP-157-158 compact block filters, simplified reproducible builds using GNU, GNU GUIX, improved support for external signers like hardware wallets, uh, separation, separating the wallet from the node, and allowing RP, a replace by fee on any transaction after it's been in the mempool for more than a few hours. Notable code changes and documentation changes. This week in Bitcoin Core, LND, C Lightning, Eclair, Lipsec P256K1, and the Bitcoin Improvement Protocol proposals. We have this Bitcoin Core change which adds support for checksums to output script descriptors. Descriptors are used to monitor for received payments and generate new addresses. So checksums improve safety by preventing copying errors that could cause money to go missing or to be sent to an unspendable address. A hashtag character is added to the descriptor grammar for separating this descriptor from its eight character checksum. For example, we have here the witness public key hash and then the hashtag checksum afterwards. See the footnote for an extended example and all Bitcoin Core RPCs that return descriptors now include a checksum. And these RPCs that are not particularly at risk of losing money don't require that input includes the checksum. But the RPCs that are safe, uh, safety critical, such as derive address or import multi, are updated to require users providing such a checksum. Uh, finally, a new get descriptor info RPC is added that accepts a descriptor and returns a nominalized form of it containing a checksum along with some other, uh, other information about it. And now let's check out that footnote about these checksums. In current example of the descriptor format with the key origin information and an error detecting checksum. Uh, so when you type in, in uh, your Bitcoin node, Bitcoin CLI, get address info of this BAC32 address uh, together uh, with this JQ and the descriptor flag, uh, then it will return uh, the witness public key hash uh, of the checksum with some further derivation pass and then the public key associated with this address uh, as well as the checksum back key. So, uh, parsing this, we can see the following. The address is a witness public key hash, right here, uh, otherwise known as pay to, pay to witness public key hash. Descriptors can succinctly describe all common uses of pay to public key hash, pay to script hash, pay to witness public key hash, pay to witness script hash, and nested segwit. 
the key origin is described between the brackets. Uh, and this uh, is all this up here. And so we have first a fingerprint, uh, which is identifies the key as the root of the path provided. The fingerprint is the first 32 bits of the RIPEMD SHA-256 hash as defined in BIP32. This makes it easy for tools such as those used with partially signed Bitcoin transactions to work with multiple scripts and other cases where you can have multiple signing devices using different keys. We have also here the hierarchical deterministic key path, uh, which is corresponding uh, to M uh, in, in the standard BIP32 notation. This allows a wallet that does not have all of its public keys pre-computed to know which private key is needed to generate in order to produce the signature. Bitcoin Core pre-computes its public keys, so usually it does not need this information when used as a cold wallet. But a hardware wallet with minimal storage and computational speed needed hardware wallet path information in order to work efficiently. The actual public key uh, used to generate the pay to pu witness public key hash uh, is right in here uh, following all this. And then we have, uh, last but not least, the checksum following the hashtag, to pr that which protects the descriptor strings against typos on import. And that is all the way back here uh, behind uh, the puppy. Okay, let's get back into the newsletter. With this Bitcoin core change, uh, the, there adds three new RPCs for managing partially signed Bitcoin transactions. UTXO update PSBT searches uh, the set of unspent transaction outputs to find the output being spent by the partial transaction. If any of those outputs outputs paid a native SegWit address, it adds the details of that output to a field in the PSBT. This information is required by PSBT signers because the BIF-148 signature format for SegWit requires the signing of information that is not directly contained in the spending transaction or derivable from the signer's private key, such as the value of the output being spent. So join par partially signed Bitcoin transaction combines the inputs from multiple PSPTs into one single PSPT. And then analyze PSPT examines a partially signed Bitcoin transaction and prints the next step the user needs to take towards finalizing it. Very useful ad additions. We have this Bitcoin core chains that adds a key pool parameter to the import multi RPC that allows imported public keys to be added to the key pool. This list of keys that are used to create new receiving and change addresses. The option is only available for wallets that have private keys disabled. Uh, see this pool request described in newsletter five. This allows a user of a cold wallet or a hardware wallet to import their public key into a watching only Bitcoin core wallet and then receive payments normally. When attempting to spend payments, the wallet can generate an unsigned transaction, including the change address, and using BIP174 PSBT and send that to a tool such as the hardware wallet uh, integration tool that will connect to the external wallet for reviewing and signing. This Bitcoin core change adds the import multi RPC to store any key origin metadata including uh, included as part of an output script descriptor. The key origin information specifies what hardware uh, hierarchical deterministic seed and derivation path was used to generate a public key. When key origin metadata is available in the wallet, any PSBT generated by that wallet will include that data to allow hardware wallets and other programs to locate private keys needed to sign PSBT. See the footnote for an ex example of key origin information in the descriptor. And we've just read this footnote earlier. This Bitcoin core change updates the list unspend sign raw transaction with key and sign raw transaction with wallet RPC to each contain a new witness script field. The, the first RPC returns the witness script and the other two can accept it as an input. Previous Bitcoin core overloaded the existing PS, uh, 
pay to script hash redeem script field for SegWit witness scripts. But this can be especially confusing in the case of pay to script hash wrapped SegWit addresses. This change makes it clear what data goes where. Uh, we have this Bitcoin Core change that allows the wallet to fall back on BIP21 parsing of a Bitcoin URI uh, if BIP70 support has been disabled. As specified by BIP72, the Bitcoin URI was extended in a backwards compatible way to containing an additional R parameter uh, containing the BIP70 URL. This was done to allow services already using BIP21 UR URIs to upgrade the, to supporting BIP70 without losing existing users. However, now that many wallets are, and our services are depreciating their BIP70 support, the same mechanism can be used in reverse so that the service can previously support BIP70 can allow their non-BIP70 users to continue get the payment detail by just clicking on the Bitcoin URI link. And this last Bitcoin core change adds a graphical user interface menu to open a wallet and adds a menu to close a wallet. This makes it much easier to use Bitcoin Core's multi-wallet mode from the graphical user interface. Although it's not yet possible to create a wallet from the GUI without using a debug console. That to do uh, is the final item on the dynamic wallet checklist. And we have a eclair change now supporting payment requests invoices in all upper cases as well as all lower cases. Mixed cases is not permitted as per the Bold 11 specification, which bases the invoice format on BIP 173 back 32. And we have the Bitcoin Improvement Protocol Proposal 760, which updates, or sorry, this, bit, this change to the Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 158, uh, compact block filtering, add additional test vectors for correct processing of data carrier outputs, the op return outputs. Piers, thank you very much here uh, for subscribing to the Bitcoin Optech newsletter. And of course, thank you to all the contributors to this fabulous organization. And thank you very much for listening here to this reading of this newsletter and see you on the next show. Bye-bye.